In this video, we demonstrate a case of inferior vena cava filter retrieval using advanced techniques in a heart transplant patient. Our patient is a 71-year-old female who presented for inferior vena cava filter removal approximately one and a half years after initial placement. Her history is significant for ischemic cardiomyopathy necessitating cardiac transplantation. Her immediate post-transplant course was complicated by multiple lower extremity DVTs, as well as hemorrhagic pericardial effusion necessitating reoperation thus leading to initial IVC filter placement shortly after transplantation. Preoperative CT scan demonstrated an infrarenal IVC filter with no evidence of migration or fracture. The procedure began by obtaining access to the right internal jugular vein with a micropuncture needle under ultrasound guidance. Passing of a 0.018 inch wire into the SVC was unsuccessful. A central venogram revealed significant right-sided central occlusion, as well as retained pacemaker. For that reason, it was decided to attempt the procedure via left internal jugular vein access. The left internal jugular vein was accessed using ultrasound guidance, and a wire was advanced into the superior vena cava. The needle was removed and micropuncture sheath was placed. The wire was removed and stiff glide wire was placed to the level of the IVC filter. The sheath was exchanged for a 5 French sheath and flush catheter was placed below the inferior vena cava filter and venogram performed. Venogram did not indicate any evidence of thrombus inside the inferior vena cava filter. The 5 French sheath was removed over a stiff wire and an 8 French cook clover snare was placed. The tip of the filter was unable to be engaged with the snare as the hook of the IVC filter was embedded into the wall of the IVC. Snaring was attempted in multiple views, including left and right anterior oblique views, and was not successful. An Amplatz wire was then introduced, followed by 14 and 18 French sheaths telescoped into each other in order to provide strength and prevent bending across the heart. A contracatheter was placed and a soft wire was snared around the hook of the IVC filter. Gentle traction was used to release a presumed band of tissue around the hook, thus releasing the IVC filter. However, snare retrieval was again difficult. The IVC filter was then hooked using the contracatheter between the struts and the neck as opposed to under the struts in order to avoid fracturing the filter, and the filter was removed successfully through the retrieval sheath under fluoroscopic guidance using the hangman technique. Fluoroscopic surveillance revealed an intact filter removed. Post-removal venogram did not indicate any evidence of extravasation or filter components left behind. During removal, several safety checks were performed in order to ensure no excess stress was placed on the heart. The IVC filter was examined on the back table and confirmed to have all 12 prongs and components intact, and this was confirmed by multiple OR staff members. The catheter, wire, and left jugular sheath were removed, and hemostasis was achieved with compression. Case length was just under one hour. The patient tolerated the procedure well and was discharged without complications.